Well, this is my uh, Perfection 1550 uh, kerosene heater, and I got the lid uh, popped open on it. And I noticed the flame was going down a little bit, and I says, you know, this is a, I was beginning to suspect, well, maybe it's because I was using the ultra-low sulfur diesel, but really what happened is um, the wick is, like, almost gone. And what I did was I pulled up, you know, I took off, I don't know what you call this, actually, but... Um, you know, after this wick is down in here, this screws around this. It's got these threads. You might want to put a little petroleum grease on there or something because, uh, you know, in case you get rusted on there, but I don't think there'll be a problem. And, you know, this is a flame spreader that sits up on the top like that. Well, you know, with this, with this, right? And this wick, though, when it's brand new, the part that's uh, cotton from the steel is about like that high. It's like way higher than that. So what I did was uh, to get a little more a little more life out of the wick because I pulled this up, and I already did it just because I had like I had like an eighth inch of wick left, man. I was like, damn, there's nothing left. I started pulling up on the wick, kind of stretch out the material, so and then put it back into these little. Uh, Hooks, whatever the hell it is, give myself a little extra um, time. And, you know, that might be a good thing to know because it'll buy you a little time. And uh, I also wanted to look very carefully at the construction of the flame spreader. And, you know, I cleaned it off. You know, I'm not going to clean this off with a drill all the time. I was doing it very lightly with a, a soft nylon brush. But you can see there's little holes right here. There's little holes right there. There's little holes right here. And you got to keep these clean. Actually, what I might do after a while is uh, get, I don't know, maybe vinegar or something like that. Bucket of vinegar and just let it sit in there one time for 12 hours or something and brush it off and, you know, hose it off a little bit. Um, because it'll take any rust off without affecting the metal in the least. And actually, this is, you can see how this is constructed. This is steel. This is steel up here on the top. And this piece is like slid over the steel and then crimped in place right here. So that's, that's brass. But, uh, you know, I don't know how old this is. Probably 60 years old or more. And then you got, that's called a flame spreader. I don't know what the device, this is called, but this screws in um, over around here. And you also have these holes in here too. You got to keep clean now they were staying clean um, even with the diesel fuel um, the ultra low sulfur diesel fuel actually they call this a kerosene slash oil heater which could be like lamp oil home heating oil you know a lot a lot of crap and like it, it's it's more um, for anything pretty much uh, kerosene does probably work the best maybe but I have not had any problems with that BP ultra low sulfur diesel not without even using additives or you know I'm gonna start throwing a little more kerosene in there because I got no wick left at all and uh, I have a new wick on order I was gonna get a um, perfection wick and I said yeah I'm gonna try this one called American wick because I heard that um, pick a wick and Carol world wicks aren't too good this American wick called American wick seemed pretty good so you got to get this thing back on here and the way you do that is you don't actually use this you got to press it and since I pulled up these um, what the hell you call it the <laughs> the cotton wick a little more um, I need to uh, push it down like that probably use two, two hands and get it down and we'll assemble the rest and lay it up and you have to line up those two wheels on the uh, uh, the thing that turns the wick up with the slotted edges, and um, it goes those slotted um, where those those wheels go is where the wick is split in half. So that's another thing. So it's down in here. Actually, it's pretty much like almost changed the wick. But I, what I did was uh, I just try to lift up the material a little more because I got a new wick on order. And I'll change this out. Boy, this, this wick looks extremely easy to change, and that's great. Your know, next step is um, 
to put this piece on you see it's got the threads I'm not going to put any grease or anything on there of course I'll be changing this wick real soon close that down and then you know you got your <laughs> see this wick actually should come up to look like about there and what limits the movement upward is this flame spread around the top <laughs> I got like I don't have any wick left I'm like wow this is going to be kind of hard to light, but I'll get it lit tonight and uh, use it. But uh, just um, the more I'm looking at this heater, the more I'm liking it. And it's so damn simple. There's, you know, of course it doesn't have tip over protection, but who cares? You know, actually, it's got a big wide base on it. I don't really see how you could tip this over too easy. But the more, yeah, I don't have, jeez, I got like, shit, I got like no wick left in this damn thing. That's why it's been going down. There's like, I don't even know if that's an eighth inch. <laughs> God. Well, we'll try to get it lit. It'll probably have a low flame, but uh, I'll be getting something new in here, a new wick here pretty soon and uh, change it out. But like I see, changing a wick out on this thing is easy, very easy.